Hey everyone, welcome to Holy Comforter's uh, webcast worship. This is our first attempt at doing so. I'm the Reverend John Strand, Rector at Holy Comforter, and... I'm Ann Gillespie, I'm your Senior Associate Rector. And we miss you, we miss seeing you, but we can be together in this way and prayer connects us. So this is new for all of us. We are on a steep learning curve, just as you are. So we ask for your generosity and compassion as we're not sure how this is gonna go. And I'm inviting all of you to be very forgiving of your own mistakes as well, because we need to do that. If you wanna join us fully in worship, please click on the link that is coming out in your email and for both the YouTube link and the bulletin link and print that bulletin out or see the link on our YouTube channel. It's right there with the service. And join in the singing and join in the prayers and join in the readings. And I hope this strengthens you and all of us. Peace.
Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you show me. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shaman pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. 
Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall now read in unison Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in the want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man flying from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind. So that God's work might be revealed in him, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly, formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes who opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jew, Jewish authorities did not believe he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man 
who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. For they had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called men who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us. And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, and Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello everyone, thank you for joining Holy Comforter for our online worship this, this weekend for the fourth Sunday of Lent. We've heard from so many of you sharing reflections on things that are sustaining you during this time and your families, and thank you for those, and please sign up for our email to receive those. We haven't yet had too many requests for assistance yet, but we are here to help. And we have people who would like to help or assist in some way, whether it's through shopping for those who need to be isolated or through a phone call. As a community, we've also often been able to quietly assist each other financially at times when needed. For many of us, our lives have been turned upside down this past week. And that in itself brings anxiety and worry there's plenty to worry about. The economy, those in vulnerable industries and businesses, our individual health or the health of those around us, those on medical front lines, and then, then the worry about when will this end. The uncertainty of an end date and time is so challenging for lives built on planning. It has grieved me to hear from friends in Massachusetts who aren't able to visit family members in this time who've been in the hospital for other reasons. 
how to compare this time. It feels like post-11, 9-11, but maybe longer. I remember stories of women in my former parish who were children during the Great Depression, and they told how it was a time for their families to be together and share resources, and they often played games and played outdoors, and they, they described it as a gift that time after the Depression as children. My piano teacher growing up was 17 years old when the Spanish flu broke out and she grieved the loss of several friends. And this time is both similar and different from those times. In fact, my wife bought some extra Ben and Jerry's ice cream for the household, which we've nicknamed Corona Cream, as a little indulgent comfort food for when we are facing more stress than usual. Hopefully I'm moving past the comfort food phase and now trying to see if I can use this new time well connecting electronically, exercising, reading, praying. I'm generally okay with curveballs and enjoy quick learning curves that are called out of us when they get thrown. We are rapidly learning new skills in how to do church from Zoom meetings to making iMovies to live streaming. We have underutilized resources that we are now using in fuller ways in this time. For some others I've heard from, those who already live with medical challenges, this social distancing or physical distancing that we are doing is already life is normal. And getting a good book in those times to sit with or staying home when there's no visible issue is normal. They have much to share with us in understanding how to use that time. The spiritual advice from the Desert tradition, those fourth century monastics, especially Abba Moses, is on my heart right now, where he said, Go into your cell and stay there, for that will teach you everything. I've used that as a mantra in my life to face into the learning that I need to do, to come to terms with the awareness that everything I needed to learn was and is right in front of me and within me making the learning curve available to me right now. As Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. We only get bored when we decide not to get on the learning curve that's set before us. How are you being called now to grow and learn? I'm reminded of this time when Terry Wade a special envoy from the Church of England sent out to negotiate, was sent out to negotiate for the freedom of hostages and was taken captive for four years. And Terry's adaptive move was to remember all the times he had shared the Eucharist with people around the world. And even though he could only be in his cell during that time, he regularly had a profound experience of God's presence. We might say today in this time, Go to your quarantine space and stay there, for it will teach you everything. Meet your God and your work there. Christians have a term for closing themselves off from the world, which we call ascesis. It's the spiritual growth that happens when you take intentional time away from the world and tend the flame in your soul. And as one of your spiritual doctors, I say to you, take some ascesis and call me in the morning. In our gospel reading for today, we hear an amazing story of crisis that comes through Jesus' healing of a man born blind. There's a conflict that breaks out over who can see and who cannot see, a debate over what is the nature of blindness in John chapter nine. The story starts out with the usual accusation that there is an exchange system in the heart of God a system where we have imagined God saying, if you do something for me, I will do something for you. Jesus' disciples asked him when they first encountered the blind man, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answers with complete clarity that any one person's suffering or illness is not caused by sin, saying, Neither his parents nor this man. 
Please note that if you look at the text of this gospel, there's a critical period that's missing in our translation of verse 3. The passage should really read Jesus saying, Neither his parents nor this man sinned. He was born blind. Period. And the passage that follows then is connected to the next sentence. And so that God's works might be revealed in him, we must work the works of those who sent me while I was dead. It shouldn't be read, he was born blind, so that God's works might be revealed in him. That's kind of crazy. The language the gospel was written in didn't have punctuation marks, and so we make mistakes on how it should be read sometimes. I'm grateful that in this time of coronavirus, we haven't yet heard a lot of language coming from televangelists, we may yet, that is saying this worldwide disaster has been caused by sin. Yes, there's been deception, and a serious lack of preparedness in this process that have made things worse. But mainly we can say that there are viruses that have developed and will develop and cause worldwide havoc in the order of things. And we can say these viruses can become points where God's work can be revealed in us. This virus forces us to see ourselves in interconnected ways we hadn't come to terms with. A wet market in Wuhan is now connected to Washington. We are one planet, and we all need each other. Viruses have no national identity. The Spanish flu started on a farm in Kansas. What is sin in this whole gospel today that we're reading is the experience of not being able to see the gifts that are being given. The blind man is constantly pointing out his gift of healing. He goes to a pool that means sent from God, gift from God. Jesus undoes the order of exchange that creates the normal world and wants us to participate in a deeper life of abundance when we face crises. I was blind, but now I see his experience not only the blind man who saw, but the experience of the community of faith that has told this story again and again, which was eventually written down so that we continue to share it today. As is usual in the case of most healing stories in our Gospels, the main point isn't the healing itself, but instead the healing that comes in relationship to Jesus, with Jesus, and the compassion of God. John Newton, as he wrote that hymn, Amazing Grace, that we sing today, describes his own blindness as a slave captain. As the captain of a slave ship, before he came to sea, he said, What I did, I did ignorantly, considering it the line of life which divine providence had allotted to me and having no concern in point of conscience, but to treat the slaves while under my care with as much humanity as regard to my own safety would admit. After he began to see in a new way, he grieved his old behavior. I hope it will always be a subject of humiliating reflection to me that I once was an active instrument in a business which at which my heart now shudders. We were apes, and they were human. That line we cross over is a line of seeing that changes the world from an old set of forms in which we behave and act ordinary, just like everyone else. Miroslav Volf describes the transition when we sit on the couch with a beer and soda and watch TV, that's ordinary. Working around the clock so you can park a better car in your garage, that's ordinary. But when you get up and play with your kids and you give time to an elderly person or educate a parishioner, a prisoner, that's extraordinary. Why? Because you are giving. Every gift breaks the barrier between the sacred and the mundane and floods the mundane with the sacred. When a gift is given, life becomes extraordinary because God's own gift flows through the receiver. In our gospel for today and for last week, 
and the week before and next week. Okay, well, every week. Jesus goes beyond living our lives on the line of a balance sheet. Just the ordinary exchange of people that changes nothing, really. The ordinary life keeps people in the same pattern. Do something for me, and I'll do something for you. And this life is just an exchange kind of thinking which assumes we can bargain with God for good things. But God does not give that way. God gives freely. In today's story, the person who's dismissed again and again on the roadside because he can get nothing back as a blind person, the person that no one else sees except as someone not to be seen, is given the gift of sight. Not because he earned it or deserved it, but because Jesus is in the confines of his human life showing how God hopes for all of us to be receivers. No one can believe there's no exchange of services. Jesus just heals as he is able. No one sinned to cause this man to be born blind. The man does nothing to receive sight except wash in the pool that's called sent forth, meaning God gives. One of my favorite expressions of the possibility of seeing with new eyes in this time is a beautiful poem written by Kitty O'Meara who is clearly inspired by an Italian journalist writing about her husband while recovering in the hospital from the coronavirus. Omira writes, And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still, and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows, and the people began to think differently. And the people healed, and in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed, and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices, and dreamed new images, and created new ways to live, and heal the earth fully, as they have been healed. Go outside and witness the gift of creation. Witness the gifts that are before you, wherever you are. Witness the gift of God's love for you. Yeah, remember it. Take stock of your own gifts in new ways and use them and give back in creative ways, reaching out to others. Cross the line of ordinary to extraordinary. Ask for help if you need it and persist in asking. Pray for those who are on the front lines. Be imaginative in your prayer. Will we see anew in this time Will we learn to value some different things? Will we see our lives as a gift? Will we let Jesus help us in that? Will we use them to God's glory? May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join with us, affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life. True God and true God, the God of my name, of one being with the Father, through him when all things was made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds to the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all God's people throughout the world, remembering especially those affected by the coronavirus, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Jennifer and Susan, our own bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one, as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach to God the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially the President, Congress, the courts, and the leaders of the nations, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, especially first responders, medical and health care workers, for those whose employment is affected by the coronavirus, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, for prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, and for those who have joined us, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially Malcolm Hufflin, who is in hospice care, and, and those others on our prayer list. For all residents and senior living communities, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, especially Marianne Clemens, mother of parishioner Jenny Langdor, and Judy Murray, mother and mother-in-law of parishioners Bill and Linda Murray, who, who those who have died from the coronavirus, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. 
to you, O Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. Peace. 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 Do you do? All right. <laughs> Good morning. Just a few announcements for our life together here today. Welcome everyone who's joining us online this weekend. We hope this supports your spiritual life in this time, and we are regularly, daily offering supportive emails to help guide you in your spiritual work. Next week, we'll be offering coffee with the clergy via Zoom call, and which you can connect to either via computer or via phone or smartphone. So look for an email invitation regarding that. Our food for thought was packed, thankfully, for Marshall Road Elementary students by the Vasidi family. And our families that we support will be getting the food they needed this week. So thank you, Vasidi family. Because the Fairfax schools and facilities are closed, our Holy Comforter is going to be hosting a farm market uh, this weekend and weekends during this time on Sundays from 9 to 1.30 from the Central Farm Market. And we're trying to support keeping the local food chain and food supply going. And please see the email instructions for distancing and careful practices. And those are a bit more stringent than even the grocery stores are, are asking for in this time. Please note also that grocery stores are offering special hours, early morning hours, for the elderly and vulnerable persons in this time. And please check with each grocery store to find out when those hours are taking place. Our office hours are 9 to 2.30 Monday through Thursday and 9 to noon on Fridays. And some of our staff are present and some are physically distancing themselves. Many are working from home in this time. Our clergy fund, discretionary fund, is used for those in need in particular ways, and so please don't hesitate to give to that fund so that we can assist those who are financially struggling. We're also planning to do our best to keep up and support our staff compensation in this time, and so please do what you can to keep up with your pledge. Please learn to give electronically if you don't, haven't done so, uh, or please support others whose hourly wage work may be compromised in this time as well. Please call the pastoral care line if you need pastoral care, especially during uh, hours when the office is closed, and that's on the main number when the office is closed and will reach one of us clergy. Also, please take care of yourself and pray and meditate. Center yourself deeply. Say enough to the stress. Let it go. Be in the presence of God. Reach out with love to those who might be isolated in this time and receive the gifts that are still being given. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember that life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain within you and those you love, today and always. Amen. Amen.